Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti. I am MrPhotographer.com. A few days ago, out of the blue, I received two emails on Affinity Photo. Actually, one of those persons emailed me twice. So you could say, I received three emails on Affinity Photo. And those of you paying attention know that in the past, I did several videos on Affinity Photo, but I haven't done any in some time. And the truth is, of all the videos I do, the Affinity Photo videos get the least amount of views. It's really not that popular of a program, and that's a shame because it really is a great application. It really is pretty much a direct Photoshop replacement. It could do most everything uh, Photoshop can do, and as far as a photographer is concerned, it probably can do everything you would want it to do. Um, so what we're going to do in this video, I'm just going to give kind of an introduction to Affinity Photo, show you around the workspace for those of you that may not have seen my earlier videos. And then in the comments below, let me know, is Affinity Photo something you want me to do more videos on? It really is, as I mentioned, a good application and it's very reasonably priced. It's only like 50 bucks and it comes in a Windows and Mac version. They have a version for the iPad as well. I believe that's around 20 bucks. So it, it's way cheaper than subscribing uh, through the Adobe Creative Cloud after a year, let's say, or whatever. So um, again, let me know. Now, as I mentioned, we're going to just kind of bring an image into it, and I'll show you some of the features. So we're going to go up to File, and we're going to go to Open. And on my um, desktop, I have a Sony RAW file, so we'll just open that up. And similar to Photoshop, when you open a RAW file up in Affinity Photo, it opens up into their version of Adobe Camera Raw. They call it the Raw Persona. They have a number of different modules, and they call those modules Personas. And this is the Raw Persona. And over on the right-hand side, you can see there's a bunch of tabs. And within each tab are a number of different controls. And again, this is very similar to Adobe Camera Raw. It's a non-destructive Raw editor, so any edits you do here do not get written directly to the Raw file. Um, when you're done here, it will create its own file. Um, but let's just do a, like a quick process of this image. Um, I'm not even going to look at it too much. Um, I'm just going to more explain to you some of the things that you could do here. First of all, at the top, when you're in the basic tab, uh, you have exposure settings and you have exposure, black point and brightness, uh, brightness, like exposure will increase or decrease the exposure of every single pixel equally. Whereas the brightness slider will spend more time in the midtones and it will tend to if you move it far to the right not clip your highlights and if you move it far to the left it won't crush your blacks so brightness sometimes is a better choice a uh, black point for those of you who remember like lightroom 3 um, it's more similar to the way that works in that there's really no uh, whites and black slider like there is in lightroom or adobe camera raw there's this single black point slider instead and it's just as effective, it just operates different. Below that, we have the Enhanced tab. We have Contrast, Clarity, Saturation, and Vibrance. Let's add a little saturation, a little clarity, a little bit of contrast. Then below that, we have White Balance, and uh, that I think that for this image, it's fine. We have Shadows and Highlights here, so I'm going to open up my, my shadows a little bit more like that. And then below that, we have profiles. Now, if you're printing this to like a specific type of printer and paper, you could pick that from here. Uh, so we have different profiles. You could see all these different profiles that I have on my computer. So uh, that's the basic tab. Then to the right of that, we have lens corrections, uh, chromatic aberration, removal to fringe. Uh, there's a bit of a lens vignette, I think, here. You can see as soon as I turn that on, it kind of zapped it away. Can you see that? All right, and then um, post-crop vignette. Um, I'm not going to put a vignette on this image. Uh, detail tab, this is sharpening and noise reduction. Uh, again, I'm not even really even looking at the image. I'm just showing you the controls. Uh, color noise reduction. Uh, noise addition, you could add noise to it if you want, you know, like grain, kind of a grain look. Uh, then you have tones, and here we have curves. So you could come in here and let's say, Put in a gentle S curve to give it a little more pop, like that. You could convert it to black and white here with this black and white tab. And it has split toning as well, so you could uh, do any split toning you'd want to the image um, there. 
And to the right of that, we have overlays, and I've never ever used overlays in Affinity Photo, but um, that would be something that you could use here in the uh, develop persona uh, if you wanted to. So once you're done in the develop persona, you could just export it if you feel like the image is finished. And they have what they call the export persona. And, you know, that's similar to like Lightroom if you're exporting an image. Uh, then, as I mentioned, you have other modules or personas here. To the left of that, you have the tone mapping persona. Uh, if you're creating HDR images, you would use that. Uh, we're in the develop persona. Then it has a liquify persona. Uh, you may remember last week, I did a video on Photoshop's liquify. Well, you have Liquify. I mentioned this is a Photoshop replacement. So you have Liquify here as well. And then to the left of that, you have the actual photo persona. And that's the actual like module that looks like Photoshop. So once you're done in the develop persona, all you need to do is click on this little develop button. And when you do that, it will automatically open the image in the photo persona. So this is the module that is looking like Photoshop. And you can see on the right, we have adjustment layers. Next to that, we have layers. Uh, so this is our actual layers panel. So whenever you're editing the image and you're doing masking or anything like that, you'll have each layer over here. Next to that, you have effects. Uh, this is um, similar to Photoshop. You could add drop shadows and uh, blurs and all that with effects. Uh, next to that, you have styles. And then next to that, you have actually stock, and they have uh, Unsplash tied into it. So if you're familiar with Unsplash.com, where you could download um, free uh, stock images, it's tied into here. So you could search via Affinity Photo for any stock images that you may want to use, and you could use them right inside of Affinity Photo there. So if we go to Adjustment Layers, and just to show you an example, you can see they have levels, white balance, all the adjustment layers you would expect. But let's just go, like go to levels. And with levels, then you could come in and just adjust like the black level over, the white level over like that, something like that. So you could just do like levels adjustment. And when we close that down, if we go back to the layers tab, you could see that that adjustment layer is right there above our background layer. So that's kind of, Affinity Photo in a nutshell, as you can see, there's a lot of tools on the left. Um, it's pretty much a direct Photoshop replacement for $49.99. Now, let me know again, is this something you'd like to, me to do more videos on? And do you have specific video ideas you'd like me to do or spe a specific video topics on Affinity Photo you'd like me to do? Let me know in the comments below. Um, also, in the description below the video, I'll have a link to their website. They're uh, made by a company called Serif. I am not an affiliate for the company, so I will not benefit in any way if you purchase it. You also could buy it if you're a Mac user through the, um, through the App Store on your Mac. Uh, so uh, check it out. Let me know what you think. Thank you, everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon. <laughs>